In this video, I want to talk about the continuous exponential function, which we are going to develop in this video. We're going to start by doing some compound interest calculation for a few scenarios. Just as a reminder, the formula for compound interest is capital B equals capital P times left parentheses, 1 plus lowercase r over lowercase n, close the parentheses, to the lowercase n times lowercase t. When we go through this formula, capital P is the principal invested, lowercase r is the annual interest rate, lowercase n is the number of compoundings per year, lowercase t is the number of years, and capital B is the balance in the account at time t. I've created a table of values for us using a time of 10 years, an amount of $100, and various interest rates, 8%, 4%, and 2%. I've calculated the balance in the account after 10 years. If we do the compounding weekly, daily, hourly, or secondly, that is every second, for the interest rate of 8%, after 10 years, there would be $222.42 in the account if we compounded weekly. If we compounded daily, there would be $222.54 in the account. Hourly compoundings would give us $222.55, and if we compounded every second, we would have $222.55 again. Now, there actually is a slight difference between the result for hourly and secondly, but we don't see it when we round to the nearest cent. So for the purposes of our bank account, it looks to us to be the same amount. There's a negligible difference between those two compoundings. Let's look at the interest rate of 4%. With weekly compoundings, after 10 years, the account would have $149.16. For daily compounding, $149.18. For hourly compounding, $149.18. And for compounding every second, still $149.18. In this case, you can see that the stabilization actually happened when we went from weekly to daily. Everything after that rounded to the same value in the cents place. Finally, let's look at a rate of 2%. After 10 years of weekly compounding, we would have $122.14. With daily compounding, we would have $122.14. With hourly compounding, we'd have $122.14. And with secondly compounding, we have $122.14. So here, because of the low interest rate, we get a stabilization that's much faster and happens, you know, even if we just go down to the weekly compounding. You'll find that for lower interest rates, this is the case. If the interest rate is higher, it takes more frequent compoundings to get that stabilization in the cents digit. So what's happening as the number of compoundings per year increases? Well, to the nearest cent, the amount in the account stabilizes. All right, so we've done this with money, but we don't have to just do this multiple compoundings with money. We can calculate growth of other things more frequently than annually as well. For example, if we look at a population of 100 bacteria, we know this population grows at 15% a day, and we want to see what happens after seven days. I've got a table with five columns in it. The first column is how we're compounding. That's daily, hourly, by the minute, and by the second. Then the second column is the n value. That's the number of compoundings. The third column is going to be 1 plus 0.15 divided by n, which is going to give us the growth factor for the problem. Then we'll do our calculation in the fourth column and count how many bacteria we have in the fifth column. Let's start with daily. So if we're compounding daily, remember that in this problem, the bacteria is growing at 15% a day. So the number of compoundings in this case is 1. We're compounding every day. The 1 plus 0.15 over n would be 1 plus 0.15 over 1, or just 1.15. For our calculation, we would start with 100 bacteria, multiply that by 1.15, and then in the exponent there, we need to account for the fact that we're doing this for seven days, right? So we would take uh, the number of compoundings, which is one, and multiply that by seven. The result of this is 266.0 bacteria. I am going to go out to one decimal place, even though we can't have partial bacterias, because I want to show the growth, and it's going to be a bit slow as we move down this table. Let's look at hourly compounding of the growth. If we're compounding hourly, that means we're doing it 24 times a day, so our n is 24. To find the growth factor, we would do 1 plus 0.15 over 24, which gives us 1.00625. Our calculation would then be 100 times 1.00625, 
and then we're going to raise that to the 24 times 7 power and that's because we have 24 compoundings per day and we're doing it for seven days. The result here is 284.8 bacteria. All right, compounding by the minute. Well, we do 24 hours a day times 60 minutes in an hour, which gives us 1,440 compoundings per day. Our growth factor would be 1 plus 0 0.15 divided by 1440. The result is 1.000104. And our calculation would be 100 times left parentheses, 1.000104 right parentheses to the 1440 times 7 power. Again, there's 1,440 compoundings times seven days. This results in 285.3 bacteria. I think this would be a good place to pause the video and have you all calculate what happens if we compound by the second. Okay, we're back. If we compound by the second, n is going to be the number of compoundings by the minute times 60, which is 86,400. The growth factor would be 1 plus, and then as a fraction, 0.15 divided by 86,400, which results in 1.000000174. Our calculation is 100 times left parentheses, 1.000000174. 0174. We'll put a right parenthesis there and then in the power we have 86,400 times 7 and the result is 286.4 bacteria. So what happens as the number of growth compoundings per day is increased? Well, well, there are more bacteria as the number of compoundings per day increases, but it's not changing by much as we get to the higher and higher compounding numbers. 